Hello and welcome to Open Academy, a higher education product in Drupal. Hopefully got some good energy in the room. Um, my name's Matt Cheney. I'm a big fan of universities. Uh, my father's a professor. My brother's a professor. I have five degrees. I like, grew up in universities, and I think it's great to be here talking to probably a lot of people who work in universities at higher ed. Can we get a quick show of hands? Who works at a university or a school or, yeah, like, wow, okay. So this is, this is, our, this is our time. Um, I've also been doing Drupal for a long time. I started Drupal about five or six years ago. I started a company called Chapter 3 with Zach Rosen and Josh Koenig, and we did a lot of work in universities, uh, a lot in the Bay Area and around the country. And I've been working with Brian and UC Berkeley for a number of years on a number of different projects. We also uh, have the great privilege of running a bad camp together uh, at the UC Berkeley campus, which is, which is always a fun time every fall. Um, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, I found another company with uh, Josh and Zach and David called Pantheon, which is uh, the best, most magical Drupal platform on the planet. And um, that's, uh, we're now in general availability today, so the stuff I'll show you, you can actually try right now um, just to go online. I'll show you some links later on. But that's uh, sort of the combination of the work we've done with the universities and the platform to host really was something that brought Brian and I and a number of other people together to work really closely. So a lot of what this presentation is about is about the work we're doing together to turn you know, Berkeley into you know, even more of a Drupal powerhouse, to have a great hosting platform and also a great set of applications uh, to run on top of that. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Brian, who, as I said, I've known for a long time. His actual job title is Master of Drupal at Berkeley, although I guess Campus Technology Services is probably also there. Um, and I'll let him sort of share sort of where Berkeley is with Drupal and, and what all that looks like. Hey, thanks a lot, Matt. Um, so yeah, uh, my title at Berkeley is uh, Applications Programmer. I work for um, Central Technology Services, and uh, I wanted to set the stage a little bit by talking about uh, myself a little bit and my experience at Berkeley. Uh, I've been there for nine years, um, working for the Cal Bears, and I've managed to keep it uh, a, a secret that I'm descended from three generation of Stanford as in Stanford Cardinal women. So, go great grandma. I wish I knew her. Um, and that I went to every Stanford home game during the Elway years. Any Broncos fans out here? <laughs> yeah, all right, Broncos. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry, this is my first DrupalCon presentation. I just need to get a couple things off my chest. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still pretty upset about the 1982 big game. Um, but I, I don't want to get too into that, so uh, let's talk about Drupal. Um, I came to Drupal f around 4.7 for a personal site, and I was working in uh, business administrative services at Berkeley at that point, and I took over a, a super insecure uh, web application written by a student, and uh, in a weekend uh, turned it into a Drupal site and demonstrated what could be done with Drupal and how quickly we could bring up sites. And from there I started um, started on my path as a UC Berkeley Drupal evangelist. Um, and uh, soon after that, it, it became pretty obvious to me that there weren't really good Drupal hosting options at Berkeley, so um, I took it upon myself to uh, learn Agar and get on Slicehost, bring up some Ubuntu VMs, and demonstrate what could be done um, for a Drupal-specific hosting solution at Berkeley. Um, I brought up a Berkeley site on that and was quickly told, uh, let's bring this back on site on to campus servers. And so that was uh, an interesting project, um, moving to Red Hat Enterprise Linux and working without full root and stuff like that. Uh, but that service is being retired right now. And the main reason was not technological problems, but it had to do with the financial structure at Berkeley. Uh, we operate on recharge, which means that every hour of my time uh, translates into $82, which needs to be charged to a client. So we were quickly looking at um, monthly fees for a simple Drupal site uh, north of $600. And that simply wasn't sustainable, so we started looking into outsourcing. So um, before uh, I get into how we came to Pantheon a little bit, I just want to take a step back and talk about uh, the state of things at, at Berkeley. Uh, Drupal is, uh, is definitely on the rise and has been for a while. We've got a, a lot of enthusiasm on campus. Um, my colleague Noah Whitman here um, has uh, manually cataloged 125 
Berkeley EDU Drupal sites. Um, I, we believe this is around 50 to 60 percent of the Drupal sites under berkeley.edu. Um, and we believe Drupal roughly serves 25 percent of departments, research labs, museums, libraries, and administrative units. Um, since we began our relationship with Pantheon in mid-November, we have handed out 122 invite codes on Pantheon. Um, and my department, which does web application development, has seen um, frequent uh, requests for Drupal consulting, bringing up new sites, site migrations, um, all kinds of different assistance. Uh, in addition to this, uh, we have a bunch of Drupal-related work in progress. We're, uh, we're putting the Office of the Chancellor on Drupal. Um, we're migrating 41 sites for the Vice Chancellor of Administration and Finance to Drupal. We have a bid out on a UC-wide um, web application which allows people to view job standards and create pre-populated job descriptions, um, which is a, currently a VB.net uh, app. And uh, we also just launched an Open Scholar pilot uh, project, which is up at scholar.berkeley.edu. And, and much of the prettiness uh, of that is uh, thanks to help from uh, themers at Chapter 3. Um, we are riding a, a, a good wave of community enthusiasm for the last uh, number of years. We, we have an active uh, Berkeley Drupal users group, which I took the reins of two years ago. It's been happening consistently since 2007. And um, we invite the public as well as UC Berkeley employees into that, and that's been a great synergy. We've really gotten um, a nice transfer of knowledge from people, uh, professionals working in the community you know, sometimes coming in and talking um, about experiences they're having with Drupal that um, are a little bit more cutting edge than some of the things that, that we're doing on campus. Um, we've been experimenting with users helping users drop in sessions, um, once again with public participation. Um, and we're trying to channel some of this community online um, in an upcoming uh, Drupal Commons site that we're going to bring up, which hopefully will provide a forum for people who are using these different Drupal um, based products like Open Scholar, like Open Academy, which we're going to be talking about, and interested in getting more information, interested in getting some assistance. So um, let's drill down a little bit and talk about um, the current situation of Drupal development on campus. Um, so typical, typical thing that um, we see is a campus organization hires a consultant. Consultant comes in and usually builds them a pretty good Drupal site um, and then uh, says here's how you add your content and takes off and this uh, campus organization is there on, the, on their own for maintenance and upgrades and, and other things that can come up as their Drupal site uh, ages. Um, we're also seeing a wide variety of, of hosting solutions selected. Um, you know everything from a legacy campus web farm which uh, for a while was lacking APC and, and some required PHP modules, um, to our more state-of-the-art campus virtualization service, which requires some amount of sysadmin knowledge um, to, to keep a site going. And, um, and then a, a whole slew of uh, approved and unapproved uh, third-party shared hosting services. Um, does this sound familiar to any of the education people out there? <laughs> Um, so, uh, you know, we're also, as far as site development goes, we see inconsistent use of scheduled backups, um, inconsistent use of uh, version control, um, spotty implementation of, implementation of central authentication, um, and homebrewed themes, which often don't quite harmonize with the enterprise look that Berkeley would like to be presenting. Uh, so, um, how do we solve these problems? Um, we, think, uh, we think the keys are to outsource hosting, and uh, hopefully that means selecting a standardized best-of-breed hosting platform. Um, we want to leverage install profiles and distributions um, and use them to reduce site development time. Um, we want to make Drupal site building easier, and we'll be talking a lot about that um, as we go on today. Um, and then it's also, of course, very important to be complying with standards, which means campus procedures, campus standards, and accessibility. Um, 
So multiple hosting providers can help us solve some of these, or mul multiple service providers can help us solve these problems. Um, and the owners of the Drupal service uh, have continued to be open to multiple relationships. Um, but Pantheon was an obvious first choice for us. Uh, we were impressed with their high performance Drupal, uh, which incorporates Pressflow, Varnish, Nginx. And then we'd seen from time to time these uh, demonstrations of Open Academy, and we were wondering, like, is it going to be as cool as they say it's going to be? And we got some money freed up to fund some development of that to, to really find out. And so that's the main thing we're going to be talking about today. Um, in addition to this stuff, you know, as many of you may know, Pantheon provides uh, out of the box dev test live environments. So right there, you know, we um, educating our developers to not develop on their live site is, is a, a great step. They got, uh, they've recently introduced on-server development, which allows our, our people to connect via SFTP or a secure rsync connection, which is, which is familiar to them. Um, but they're not leaving our power users out in the cold. There's uh, still a great workflow for local host development um, and uh, you know, direct interaction with Git. And then, of course, it's all tied together by a web UI that um, makes it easy to, to migrate your code um, up the stack, dev test live, and migrate your database and files down the stack and do things um, according to best practices. Um, we, we've really enjoyed the flexibility we've found in Pantheon. I mean, they've got a great customer service orientation, um, customer -centered, centered orientation is what I meant to say. Um, and they've really been uh, willing to understand our needs. We, we have not felt like we're either too small or too big a customer for them, which has been, you know, a really nice experience. And um, together we found a lot of creative ways to solve problems. Um, we, we first started talking with Pantheon early on about um, how do we create these start states? Um, what, um, what should we present to our users? Uh, and um, we, in addition to Open Academy, we decided, hey, it's important to also give, uh, give our people a vanilla Drupal 7 lightly cu customized uh, install profile um, so that they don't feel like they're all like being put in one box, which might not be as flexible as they'd like. Um, some of the fun stuff has been um, we want to have some control over some of the functionality that's integrated into these uh, into these install profiles, and so we've worked uh, um, with uh, with Matt and uh, his colleagues on uh, how they're how they're leveraging apps, and we've brought up a UC Berkeley app server um, that delivers things like um, a solution for cent uh, central authentication, the solution for mixed mode authentication, sites that need to have some people coming in via CAS and some people coming in via Drupal standard auth, and a little bit of glue that keeps um, people uh, configured correctly depending if they're in their dev or live environments. We want them to be hitting our, our dev LDAP server as, as opposed to our production LDAP server if they're just testing. Um, we've somewhat, um, we've taken a good step towards solving the updates uh, problem and the site maintenance problem in that um, one of the things that you get with Pantheon is they will, um, you'll see, get an alert on your dashboard when there's a, a core update available. And a core update means not only an update to Drupal core, but an update to quote unquote core modules that, that work with Open Academy or that work with the Berkeley install profile. So I wanted to take just a second and talk a little bit about um, um, the little bit of co-branding we've done um, and, and some, some other reasons that we, we did it. Uh, you know, in addition to, to simply letting people know that they're using Pantheon, um, but it's a Berkeley-specific Pantheon, um, bringing up the subdomain pantheon.berkeley.edu has allowed us to take some of the load off our developers in terms of setting up uh, SSL. We're using a subject alternative name cert that, that has a wildcard name in it. That, and this means that um, when you bring up a, a, a dev site on Pantheon, it, basically a cert is already working and you can turn on secure pages or you can turn on 443 session and be going. Um, prior to this, you were required to create your own certificate signing request, email our PKI team, 
and then have them tell you you got it wrong and go through it a few times and, 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 to, and then figure out where to put the key. And, that, and that's, a, that's a lot to ask some of our people who are just web de developers. Um, and additionally, uh, the, the subdomain allows us to do a wildcard registration on our CAS server, so CAS can be working out of the box um, as soon as you bring up your dev site. Um, and, and we're excited about that because uh, we're looking at uh, really um, making this uh, a default um, so that we don't have um, people um, having to manage accounts for people who have left the university. You know, if they're, if they're going via central authentication um, and they're removed from our, our um, systems, they won't be able to log into your Drupal site either uh, after they're gone. Um, and finally, um, something we get um, that's kind of in this category is um, uh, what I'm calling generically because it has no real name yet, a Berkeley Users Management Dashboard. And um, this allows um, UC Berkeley to have some administrators um, who um, can field uh, launch requests from our users. A typical Pantheon user is ready to bring their site live. They will uh, click a button that says, uh, give us your credit card. And um, so we've got a different um, situation set up for Berkeley users. Um, and they have to jump through some bureaucratic hoops, fill out a web form for us, um, and then we can go in there and say, yeah, you're ready to go live. So that's, that's a nice workflow for us. Um, it also provides us a report of, you know, what a user is responsible for what um, dev test live domains. And um, in the future, we're gonna have um, some information about security release status of all the sites. So when there is that you know, moderate to critical security release, we can quickly get a view of what sites are affected, who might need help here, um, making sure that we're in compliance. So um, I'll just show you a cu couple of quick slides uh, in case you haven't seen Pantheon before um, that um, shows the user interface. Basically, when you create a, an account, um, this is where you land. Um, and uh, you've got you know, options to download your Drush aliases, uh, and those will work remotely um, from your desktop, if you wish. Um, and uh, a few other things, add your SSH key. There's other places where you can add team members to your site. Um, and then once you've done that, um, you get to choose, okay, what do you want to install? And so for, the, for Berkeley people, we'll eventually uh, have options up here like UC Berkeley Drupal 7. UC Berkeley Open Academy, um, which have our specific customizations to it. After you pass this screen, um, we're into the install profile. And um, this is where a lot of the Pantheon magic happens. Um, after um, configure site, you can see some of the app stuff in gray, which might be a little bit hard to see in the back. Um, that's happening, you'll get, to, you'll get a, more information from Matt as we go through the demo on this. Um, we get the Panoply apps that, um, that enable panels, um, the Open Academy apps, and finally, the apps that come from the UC Berkeley app server. So with that, let's dive into Open Academy and I'll turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Brian. Um, so yeah, and this is, this is all stuff that you can do right now. You can go on your laptop, sign up for a Pantheon account, and then you can dump in and look at a lot of the same stuff that we're looking at today, so that could be something to take home and play with. But what I really want to talk about is sort of Open Academy, what are the features to it, how does it work, and then get into a demo to show everyone some of the magic that we've built. Um, I think the place to start, though, is really sort of to talk about why and sort of what the larger goal of the, of the project is. I think the, the way to start is universities have a lot of great content, and they have a lot of very smart people, and they have a lot of very bad websites. Um, and that's not a slight to the people who work there at all. There's a lot of, every department has a website, every faculty person can have a website, every research group, every academic unit, every event. I mean, there's so many sites that you need all the time and that there's a million other things that you need to be doing. And part of what Open Academy is striving to do is to say, look, like, let's make spinning up sites easy. And let's also make spinning up sites and configuring them not a task for developers, something that you can do as a, you know, as a faculty member or a staff person or someone that doesn't have specific Drupal skills because those are in high demand and become very expensive and, and tricky to do. 
And so what we really are trying to do with Open Academy is essentially democratize a lot of this technology, make it so if you're a sort of university department, you don't have to go out and drop, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to get like a whiz bang site, that you can have something, you know, that's relatively powerful, that's customized to your needs, and if your university has a theme, looks like the way it should, without having to to, to go that sort of custom route. Um, and I think one of the really interesting stories, one of the things that motivates me sort of strongest about this is is, is several years ago when we were working at Chapter 3 doing university sites, I had this one very weird day where I got a call from someone at Berkeley, a department that wanted a website, and we talked for a while about the requirements and a little bit about some other ideas, what would have sort of like bouncing around in my mind at that point. And, you know, we got to the end of it, and I'm like, well, okay, like, you know, whatever, like, what do you, hey, what's, you know, what's your budget, what does this look like? And they had a really low amount of money um, because that's all they had is, you know, land-grant school, state university, California isn't, like, you know, has some funding issues. Um, and, uh, you know, and that was really sad to me because I'm like, these people don't want anything that's that different than other people, but they're sort of priced out of this thing. And then I got a call from another university also, uh, and they had a great deal more money. And they had actually five times as much money for basically the same stuff. And I'm like, that's actually really, really unfair. Um, and that's not what Drupal should do. That's not what open source should do. And so let's try to build a Drupal product that actually can be used by everyone so you don't have to, you know, continually reinvent the wheel. Uh, every time you want to have a, an event calendar or people directory or a news feed or a list of publications or, or a list of courses on your site. So, uh, we started to build a Drupal product. It's a little hard to do. If anyone struggled through it, you know, I guess we can empathize together. Um, I think it's sort of a journey to get one done. Um, a lot of that's because, you know, this is new stuff. Like, there's, you know, a lot of the stuff you need to work on this is, you know, only a few people have done before. The actual tools and patterns are still in development. There's a lot of disagreement over how to, you know, best, best sort of do this for Drupal 8, as well as just stuff you should use now. There's several solutions for default content, several solutions for a number of other things. Um, and that, you know, just getting 30, 40 contrib modules to work together harmoniously with your custom stuff and getting it all to, like, customize and code without having to do any configuration is a really tricky task. Um, and you can spend a lot of time just getting that to work. And that's not even talking about your specific problem of trying to build a university site. It's just to sort of, just to get it up and running. So I suffered through that. That was the last, you know, several months of my life. And um, now we have uh, something really good, I think. Um, on a sort of higher picture level to talk about sort of the philosophy behind the product. I mean, I think the, the biggest difference you'll see with what I'll show you versus maybe what you've seen before is that the Open Academy product is privileging the content creator and sort of the end user of the website that it doesn't ask you to go to the Drupal back end, it doesn't ask you to be a technical whiz to get things done, that everything is on the front end, everything has previews and, you know, is really easy to use and looks a lot more like something that you would probably want Drupal to do than what it does, does today. Um, it's also something that I think I want, you know, in terms of, of sort of, of access in terms of a product, it should be the kind of thing that you can get a really good website without having to customize it. I mean, you can add new stuff, obviously, but that it's something that I feel everybody should have access to and should have access to for, for free. Um, I'm populist on Drupal.org, I believe in a lot of that kind of stuff, and so you can go today, you can download it, you can run it, and have a great site. Um, and I think also just in terms of longer vision, like getting Drupal to run 20% of the internet is going to require this kind of stuff. Yeah, we're never going to get 20% of the internet by paying custom work for every site. We need standard solutions, and universities are a great place to start because you all need like hundreds of these things every time you have a university. Um, we also built the product in a way you can extend it and remix it, similar to how DJs work, just because, you know, not everyone wants the same thing. You want to extend it and do it. So to get there, technically, there's a little bit of back end, and I won't go too much into the Drupal sort of, sort of technical details, although I'm happy to talk after or take questions. But um, the, the really the, the, the strongest place to start here is, I think Drupal's great and the contrib modules are great, but I think one thing that's been missing in the Drupal product space is really a sort of like, I don't know, like operating system layer, maybe is not the right way, but some sort of like standard set of functionality that like will make Drupal better than what Drupal core is. Uh, for example, it's 2012, there is no WYSIWYG in Drupal. To get one set up is actually a little tricky, and to get one really tricked out is even trickier still. And so one of the things that we sort of found really quickly in what we were doing is that we needed a sort of this base layer, which ultimately is called Panoply, that'll actually provide a lot of the standard stuff people really need. They need to have really cool faceted search. They need to have WYSIWYG. You need to have admin dashboards. You need to have, you know, a lot of this kind of functionality. And so let's just standardize it. Um, and so if you were at Earl Miles' talk earlier in this room, he talked a little bit about this. But we sort of took that base stuff I just talked about, and then all of like the panels module magic that I know about, and that Earl knows about, and Sam Boyer knows about, and everyone I talk to knows about, and we rolled it all together into this sort of base distro. 
So you can go to Drupal.org now and get you know, slash project slash panoply and you can download all this stuff. It doesn't have any university stuff to it, that's what Open Academy does, but it provides a sort of base install. And that's what Open Academy uses to build all of its stuff. And I think other distributions can as well. And so you get some stuff, you know, sort of out of the box. You get a bunch of these features, which I talked about. You get the genius of these people down here. Um, and you get a bunch of the panels modules. So panels, uh, panels IP, panelizer, fieldable panel panes, PM existing pages, panels breadcrumbs, panel layouts, and a few other things that'll sort of be rolled in. And this, I think, is the future of Drupal. I think this is where Drupal 8's gonna go in terms of layout and, and content management. I think this is where Drupal products should go. Um, I've been doing Drupal sites with panels for like for many, many years. There's a great uh, audio only recording of me and the 25 year old version of me at Bad Camp in 2007 or 2008, talking about how this is like the future of Drupal. Um, and I think it's true, and I think it's more true now than it was now. And I think it's more true for products than it has ever been for, or that it was for building sites. But this is, uh, this is very cool. I'm very excited about this. And on a technical level, you get a bunch of stuff. It, is, it makes Drupal for everyone. You just get the ability to customize a page by hitting at the bottom. You get a bunch of layouts you don't have to write any CSS to get, and they're all responsive to boot. You get to have an in-place editor that actually looks pretty nice and will work to actually change the way your site looks and, and functions without having to go on the back end to write any code. You get live previews of the things you're gonna add so you can actually see sort of what's going on and you don't have to guess. And you get that WYSIWYG and an actual content editing experience that, that's a little more straightforward for people who aren't, or aren't used to Drupal and, and maybe don't even know what they're using is Drupal. So. That's Panoply, it's uh, online right now, Drupal.org slash project Panoply, and you can also, it's on Pantheon as well as an install. And that's really the base. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and that's the base, the base stuff for people who are developers, presumably, you know, panels, advocates, that's, that's a really big thing. But for Open Academy and for universities, like, that's just a missing piece of functionality that we need to build, like, really intelligent, like, vertical specific applications that we need to say, as a university, I want to develop specific use cases that I need to have functionality around. I just need that base to do it. So Open Academy, I think, is a solution for university websites. And specifically, it offers these features um, that allow people to really sort of expand their site beyond standard Drupal. So the features we have right now, we have a, a people feature, which is a directory of, of, of individual profiles and the ability for people to like, you know, associate with various other items. You can list your publications or your courses you teach on a, on a site. Have the ability to have events. You can have event calendaring and individual events for specific sort of tags or areas. Publication lists that integrates with Biblio module so you can have really strong citation support as well as some good like promotional images and stuff to show off some of the, the academic work that you've done. There's a news feature that looks a lot like a blog, but has, you know, it's sort of geared more towards, you know, announcements, and there's abilities to feature parts of it in the system we'll show you. And there's a course directory that uh, allows you to sort of list the courses your department or university offers, and then associate those other things as well, all tied in with this uh, Open Academy core. And that this is stuff that I think everybody sort of needs. I've built this stuff like dozens of times, and I think that it's good to sort of standardize it and really get people working on sort of uh, what other things do we need to expand on this. These are the first sort of five-ish real sort of app use cases. There's another half dozen planned, and I'm definitely really open to talking to people about other stuff that you want. We've got plans to do a, a media image gallery. There's an FAQ uh, app that could be installed relatively easily, um, and there's a bunch of other things that are being sort of sketched out. But these are also all done as apps, which uh, if you're familiar with Drupal's sort of development practices, features is probably pretty common. Apps is sort of an extension on top of features that uh, specifically will work with a remote app server. And that app server will like serve your updates and allow uh, you to use a Drupal core update manager to download, download them. So actually, if you go through the install for Open Academy, this code you get initially doesn't have like any of these things. You actually pick, you're like, I want the news thing, I want the events thing. And when something new pops up, you go to your dashboard and it's like, hey, there's a new FAQ app, you can install it. And I think that's a cool way to like, it's, it's still new, but it's a cool way to, to, to manage Drupal sites. And I think for universities, it becomes really important because you can easily throw in additional uh, apps. And so Brian mentioned Berkeley has their own app server that has the authentication module and some other stuff. And so you know you have this layering effect. So you get your Panoply apps, you get your Open Academy apps, and then you get your, your university specific apps. And that helps to make um, you know, sort of a really easy to, easy to customize site. You can customize your functionality and you can also customize your theme. So one of the things that we did a lot of work on with Open Academy was figuring out how do you allow for the theme to be overridden and um, allow people to have their sort of custom look and feel. Um, 
And uh, the designer at Chapter 3, Nika Lorber, who goes by Night's Lobster on, uh, on Twitter, um, she uh, has been really big of an advocate of a template approach for Drupal design. So she's uh, got a, a blog post where she lists out about 30 or 40 different Drupal elements every site needs designed. Um, there's maybe another dozen that Open Academy would require. We have a nice spreadsheet that outlines them. And the two base themes that we give with Open Academy sort of lay all of those out. And the sort of the, the, the sort of big vision here is that because panels controls all of the like content variable in the middle of the page, that all you really have to do to put a university site on there is either A, take your existing university theme and just dump it on, or B, uh, just customize some header and footer stuff in the, in the, in the, in the theme and then change a few of the, the standard Drupal elements and away you go. And then you can customize your site. And you can actually um, make it responsive relatively easily because all of our layouts are responsive, all of our widgets are responsive, and if you have a header and footer that is too, um, you're good to go. And I think that's a really, really big win because having mobile access on campus is, is increasingly a big deal. And having it sort of work with your content and presentation layer and not having to build a separate thing for it is, uh, is a big, is a big uh, saver of time and sort of just keeps it all together, which is great. Um, you can also obviously extend it. So the apps I talked about and the theme I talked about. Um, so, you know, in terms of this really sort of showing you off, off, I think we can sort of dive in and, and do a live demo, which is always risky, so I'll put that out there, but, you know, let's give it a shot. So, um, I had gone through, oh, um, okay, let me throw, um, sorry. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've actually spun this up on Pantheon already. Um, you get a cool little dinosaur at the end of this thing, so you can sort of see um, see what it is. So that's the uh, Open Academy source. Nika designed that, and it starts your site. And I've got here the actual Open Academy uh, using the Berkeley theme that the Berkeley Communication Office designed. And so this is what you get out of the box. Um, that all I've done is turned on the theme, and you have you know sort of access to a pretty, you know, I think, good looking and kind of reasonable university site. And this is something that. You know, we use the default content module in Drupal to provide default content, so you can see some pictures of some stuff I like and um, some random vegan lipsum text on the site. But it's good because it actually gives people a sense of like what the site is before they start. Um, one of the problems with Drupal, if you've installed it straight up, is that it doesn't have anything, so you don't know what it does. This sort of gives you that kind of option, which is great. Um, and so I can click through and sort of show some you know, specific things. So we've got our front page, obviously. And we have uh, a course directory, which you know has specific courses that you can look at, and they just have information about sort of when they are and who offers them. There's a news feed that um, has a sort of you know featured news item that becomes important for people if they want to showcase something specific from their larger feed, um, and then they've got this sort of standard kind of stuff. Each of these things obviously gets into a you know an actual design of a of, of a page. There's tag tag support, which is pretty important for news. Um, there's a people directory that uh, has a sort of list of people that are categorized by certain tags. We give these by default, but you can change them. Um, there's an event system that uh, has a small mini calendar, some event types, and then a sort of list of upcoming events. Um, this is, you can change this to a calendar, which we can do later um, if you want to see sort of a different, different take on that. And then there's a list of publications that has some basic info about, you know, sort of who's published it and, and some stuff that gets featured. And that this is the kind of like sort of general use case that I think a lot of people have. And I think just getting going with this easily out of the box is a, is a big win for people. And that our sort of assumption is you'll spin up a site, you'll get something like this, and then you'll start customizing it, and then you can have your site. Um, so some other stuff that I think would be really sort of neat to sort of point out is that we also, because we are you know, running on Pantheon and have some the Apache Solar configuration, which would work anywhere, um, we uh, have a sort of search interface so I can search for, for water, which I know shows up a few times. And we actually get a sort of faceted search experience that's, that's driven this way. Um, that's powered by the Panoply search, but it's cool because if you don't have Apache Solar, it just falls back to the normal Drupal search, so it sort of is a pretty seamless kind of transition, which I think is, is useful and gives people a sort of leg up. There's also a, um, an admin dashboard that, um, that's, that gets you a lot of uh, functionality for your site. And this is, as far as I can tell, the only actual admin page you should ever have to go to, and this is part of the philosophy here. So this is our admin dashboard. Um, it takes a bunch of, uh, of Jen Lampton's total control module, and it, it sort of lays it out uh, a little, you know, sort of a little tighter and uh, in the sort of theme with the apps. 
but it gives you sort of here quick links to actually install new pieces of content. So this is all the content we have, and we have little links to add them. We can also see, see all of them. That's a sort of content management screen or uh, configure them if we have that permission. Um, we have the ability to sort of manage our, our categories. So we can, for example, I think for academic term, we add a number of like common sort of term like fall, spring, summer, you know, mid-semester kind of things, but you can obviously change that if you're on a different, you know, a trimester system or something different. Um, same for event types, tags, and things like that. And that all uses the, the taxonomy system, obviously. Our ability to customize the menus. We just took, we just actually, uh, I suppose, the menus that are actually pretty useful, header, footer, and, uh, and the main menu. The other ones are, are sort of hidden. And then uh, customize the users. And then most of the other stuff you get is just sort of interaction with the theme and the apps. And that these are the things that you would need to customize to make your site, but other than that, you're sort of good. So the theme, I can sort of pop up, has a bunch of theme settings. This is default in the Berkeley, uh, the Berkeley theme, but it'll pull up any theme settings for any theme. And we added some stuff here for people to sort of customize, you know, the name of the university, the copyright information, some social media links and other things. And that's, uh, you type that in at install as well, but you can customize it later. And that's what powers the sort of bottom and uh, the footer and the header of the site. Then each of the apps also has specific configuration. Um, right now, the only configuration they actually have is the ability to disable the demo content, but eventually we'll add more sort of feature flags here so you can sort of choose maybe at install, do you want to have a, a, a calendar that's like a monthly view or a weekly view or a list or, or whatever and actually make some decisions there, which is nice. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and sort of show you the, just maybe the content editing experience because I feel this is really sort of a, a central part of what, what a lot of people need to do with their site. And the place I'll start sort of to show you that is, um, is, is a use case. We're working with uh, the Department of Political Science. They have a sort of gender uh, st study site that they're putting up. And they basically need these five things and then they also need the concept of working groups for their site because they've got a number of working groups at the university. It's a pretty common case. And so the way that we sort of would support them is to allow them to actually just go create specific pages for each of their working groups. So I can also add content this way. So I'll go add my basic page. And now I get here. So I'll go um, all working groups. Um, I've also taken here, this is the path auto module that does automatic generation of URLs. Usually it's hidden down in the field set somewhere. It's sort of tricky to customize. We've really privileged it and put it at the top so people can have real full access to that. And then we have a WYSIWYG here that ends up being um, pretty powerful. So this is a main, main page for our working groups. Um, for those who have used WordPress, this might be pretty familiar to you, like exactly the same buttons. Um, it's TinyMCE, which I think is a great editor. Um, I don't have strong ideological opinions on that, but it's what WordPress uses, and I think it's a pretty standard solution. Um, and I think that this layout ends up being, it's pretty well battle-tested for individual content editing experiences. It also has this neat little kitchen sink plugin that'll actually store it in a cookie, the decision, so if you are someone who loves to have, I don't know, the ability to colorize your text, like I do, um, you can have that exposed, otherwise you can hide it. You also have, we also have pretty slick integration with the media module, so I can bring that up, um, and I can go back to my library of images and decide to actually add one of these. So this is my mother, she can, we'll put this, we'll get this down here. Um, and that this media module, uh, it's, we're running on the, two, the 2X version of, of dev because that's really where a lot of the action is, but um, I think it's a great solution. It does video, it does images, and I think it's really a sort of consensus decision um, moving forward. Um, so this is, uh, so yeah, so I, I built this up. The other thing is if you don't like WYSIWYG, if you like HTML, the, there's a little toggle down here, you can actually go to HTML, and that'll spit out the HTML for the page. If there's media, it's got some special stuff, but you can sort of see for the, uh, for the, the coloring, they just put in the, the markup here. And this actually is using the market down editor, which is a separate editor, with, uh, better format switches it. And so I can decide to actually use these kind of buttons to continually customize the HTML. And this is something that hopefully people can sort of use as a way to say, we're not gonna lock you out of the HTML, we're gonna provide a sane default, which is the WYSIWYG. So um, there's also the ability to add some, a featured image and some other stuff here. But I'll go ahead and put this in the menu, which sort of makes this all happen. And I'll call this working groups. And I'll put it in the main menu. All right, cool. So now I've got in the working groups, I've got a, I got a bit here. And now we'll just, I'll just add a couple more of these things just to sort of show you sort of how this, all this stuff would work. So go ahead and whoop. Um, add another basic page. 
Um, we also use a pretty cool uh, module called Menu Block, which has a panel option, which is why we use it, uh, to actually build little submenus. So we'll see, we can have this as sort of a, a um, working group one. This is a working group. And you can obviously customize the, the HTML to whatever you want. Working group one. And then I can start to actually, like, by building out my main menu, I can start to actually customize sort of the tree of this stuff. So if I go back to working groups, I start to have a, a list on the, on the left side that actually sort of will tree my content. And it'll go several layers deep, which is very cool. And it's the kind of thing that like people can really, I think, sort of use to build their site. It will produce general content. And that is just, I think, just a, a nice sort of, sort of easy feature. So let's get a little more like cool and crazy. So the other really awesome thing, and this is what Panoply does, and this is where I think really the future of, this, of Drupal can go with a lot of this layout stuff, is to say, I want to change this page. This, this, this content isn't what I want. I want to change and add some stuff. And I want to do that now without doing development. So I showed you all the admin screens I'm going to show you. Everything else here is on the front end. And everything else sort of comes through these two buttons. So I can first show you the layout button. That's probably the, the easiest. So this is, a, this is a page. It has a layout, as you can see. If I wanted to change the layout, I can just click here. And I get all of the layouts that I already have defined in Panoply. So there's 26 of them, I believe. And you can see the one that's been selected. But I can go ahead and just change that. And I get the, the cool panels bit to, uh, to rearrange them. And I save. And now I've actually changed the layout right here and there. And that's something that I think is actually really hard to do in Drupal normally. Like, to write this in code is a, is a fair bit of work. And even to do it in panels on the back end can be a little tricky. This will override it for just this page. We also use a panelized modular, so you can do this for any individual node, no problem. Um, and that's pretty cool, because people want different layouts for different things. You also have the ability, if we go back to the, the main site, to, um, you can you also add your own layouts. It's just standard panels, layout, plugins, and every one you get will show up there, and now you have even more flexibility. We also have the ability to style the site in the front end. So Berkeley's got a few colors, gold and blue, that are a big deal to them. And so if we actually bring up the IPE by customizing it, we get this kind of interface. This is in the latest version of Panels 3.2. You can download it and you'll install it. And if you customize your page, you end up, you know, have the standard ability to sort of move stuff around as you will. But you also get the ability to change the style. So if I bring up my style changer, I can see here on the right I have a preview of my content. And on the left I have some style settings. So there's this blue header we can add. And that'll make my, you know, header blue. I can also make it gold. And um, I can also make it have this cool background blue callout style, which I think is the best. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now I've actually sort of customized the style of my site without having to really write any CSS or even define CSS properties. And that's something that is easy to extend. We obviously identified a few cases in Berkeley's uh, needs that like has for their styles, but every university has a style palette. You could implement a few of these panels style plugins and you can do this. So we can go ahead and just sort of, you know, get a little crazy down here you know, change it out. Maybe we'll make this one gold. Check it out. Make this one also gold. And then we'll make this one at the end blue. All right. Blue. There also is a very cool uh, module in panels called Stylizer, which we're not using, but that'll allow you actually to like on the fly custom create your own styles. So you can actually pick the, the, the fonts and the colors and all of that other stuff, which I think is a very cool, um, cool, way, cool way to go. So yeah, so we've got a site. It looks, you know, generally what we want, but we can change it, obviously. Let's do more stuff. So one of the things we can also do is we can configure um, individual uh, panes by just sort of going to the configuration options. So I can look at this recent news bit, hit customize, and it'll bring me up a similar screen from before, but now I'm talking not about style, but I'm talking about content, which is an important difference. And you can see I've made some decisions here. I, you know, it's recent news. There's two items. But I can easily go ahead and change this. So, oops. Um, I can do three, let's say. And I'll update that preview. Um, and now I have a third option. Or maybe I do want to show the tags because I think that's helpful. But I don't really want to show the body. And I can do this. And this gives me the ability to really sort of, you know, play with my content and, and have a really good time of it. I don't have to worry about you know, going into the views to configure. I don't have to worry about writing theme functions to do it. I can just sort of pick what I want. And that this is something that's really slickly innervated with the views module. These are all just views fields. You add more, you get the ability to customize. And we, we show it off right there. So I can go ahead and save that. Um, that also works for things that are a little more 
Uh, for the node views, this is a node view right here. So if I customize that node view, I get a similar looking screen, but instead of picking the fields on it, I can actually pick the, the view mode. So this is a featured style, as a special view mode we have in Open Academy, but I can also show the standard Drupal teaser, or if I was so inclined, the full content. And that becomes really cool because you can now, like, I can add a node to a page and have that ability to just show it full and not have to worry about sort of what's going on, which is very nice. So we'll save that. Um, more stuff. Um, the other thing that we have is, um, we can do this to a, let's, we'll go back to our working groups page and I can sort of, sort of change this up. So we'll go to our working group page. And this is a node. Um, it's uh, a, uh, just a basic page node. It comes with Panoply pages. But because it's a panelized, we can go ahead and use Panelizer, customize it. So I can customize this page and I can actually add custom content to this page without having to, um, uh, without having to override all of them or go into the back end. So let's say this working group maybe is very interested in events. So I can bring up my ad screen and I have a new custom design for my ad content modal. This is, um, I think, a slightly more aggressive style, but it allows for a little a sort of cleaner experience. And I can actually, for each of the apps that I have, I have the ability to sort of see live previews of the different things that I can add. So there's some courses, here's the events. Um, yeah, I got you know, a calendar, a bigger calendar, a sidebar, a list of all news. The same thing through is for, for the actual, uh, for news items, um, people and publications have exactly the same. Um, and this is something that I think is nice because you can really sort of see what you get before you get it and then you can um, make decisions that way. And if you add more things, you add more panel panes, they'll just show up here and you can have them. So I'll go ahead and add a, we'll add a sidebar of upcoming events uh, to this page and then we can go ahead and pick some stuff. So let's see, we will pick, well, we don't want two dates. We all, we all for date and time to be separate, so we'll have that, and let's not show the body because the picture is enough to attract people to our event. Um, and then we'll maybe just have, we'll have just the upcoming two events. Cool. Okay, cool. So, um, okay, so now we have our upcoming events in the sidebar, and this is just for this working group page. If I was to go to the, to the main page, it doesn't have any of these things. It's just customized for just this one. Um, I also have the ability, obviously, to change the layout of this page. So maybe I want to get a little more fun with it, and I'll go ahead and do, do this one. Um, and sidebar content, that looks fine. Um, but now I have this item at the top. Just go mm -hmm. save. Okay, cool. Oh, that looks the same, sorry. All right, we'll do a, a better layout. Let's go, we'll go to the right side. Um, And so, I mean, this is like, this is the kind of experience too that if like you're working as like an IA person or like a designer or someone in content strategy, like these are the kind of things that actually prototyping it becomes really fun because you can have the ability to decide, hey, I want to, um, uh, you know, try out this thing and then see how it looks or, you know, try another thing and show it to someone else and see how they do it. The other piece that then becomes really important, and this is where I think um, we really merge a lot of the really cool stuff in Drupal 7 into panels, is this module called Fieldable Panel Panes. And Earl demoed this, er this earlier but the way it works is that you, for each of these little widgets down here, these are custom things that we created as part of Panoply widgets that are sort of generic pieces of, um, of, of sort of, I guess, a framework. So this, uh, this, this links is actually using the link module to expose a special field. You can add a file, an image, text. You can have a map, table, video, spotlight, or a submenu. And that these are things that just sort of, sort of work out of the box. So I'll go ahead and add some quick links this is something that we see a lot. People on a university site want to have a bunch of links to things offsite or, 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 or commonly referenced items that they have. So I can go ahead and do, I'll do quick links and I'll make links, I'll make the link for DrupalCon, DrupalCon.org. And then um, because I made it a multiple select field, I also have the ability, I can link back to Drupal. Um, and I can also we'll link one to Berkeley as well. I also at the bottom here, sort of small, but I have the ability to make this reusable. So if I wanted to just put it on just this page, I, I could just hit finish and I would do this. Or I could decide to say, this is sort of, you know, quick links, um, and I'll make it reusable. So I'll save it, maybe put it at the top, and, um, and then, so now I have my links up here, but if I was to go in, let's say, say save that, and now I go back to the home page. And decide, okay, well, maybe I want to um, add those up here. 
I can just remove that, that help text, which isn't that helpful, now that I've got the product, and I can actually now see the, the links that I have, and I can add those to the page. And that becomes really helpful because now I've got, I can start to build a library of things that I really like, and I have then all the ability to, to you know, I can style this one the, whatever way I want, and I can also then customize it any way I want. And there's a little warning if you customize it, it'll say, hey, if you edit this field, it'll change everywhere. But that's sort of what you want, so that seems really cool and useful. And that'll work for, uh, for, for quick links. It'll also work, we could do images. So I'll, uh, I can go ahead and add an image here just to show you how that works. Um, I got some pictures from my brother's graduation, so I'll add that here, and I can upload an image. And it's cool because it works in the, the C-Tools modal, um, and I won't, make this, I won't make this one reusable because it'll only be on the home page. And so now I have, I have my, um, my image right there, which is a little cool. And this is the kind of thing, and this is the kind of experience I think that people really want when they're talking about building websites, because they don't want to have to go like write a bunch of code and format a bunch of images and like do a lot of the sort of like technical work to get this done. They just want to be able to upload the image they want and have it fit in the content area, and also be smart enough so that if I wanted to, for example, move it into another content area, that it would actually be able to expand um, or, con or contract in size, and that, that's really helpful. Um, I can also sort of play around with sort of customizing it if I don't like what I see and go back. Um, the other thing that I think has been really, I, th I find really useful in university space are these spotlight pieces of functionality. I assume a lot of you have this on your site where you want to have a series of images and some text and links really sort of showcase various things that you're working on. Um, that's actually to do that in Drupal. There's a lot of ways to do it. There's a few modules. They're, they're, pr they're pretty good solutions, but they require... Uh, you, they require some technical expertise to get working. You've got to build some nodes and put them in a view and, or a node queue to like order them. And it just sort of takes Drupal site building experience to do, which for site builders is no problem. But for an end user, I want something a little more straightforward. So one of the things that we added as a sort of, uh, we made a new entity called Spotlight. And if you actually add a Spotlight um, to, the, to the page, it'll actually give you the ability, so you could say my Spotlight. And you could actually just sort of fill out a title, link, image, and description and you can add as many as you want. So if we go look at this one right here, we can see I've actually got these things in here. And this becomes really straightforward because if I want, say I want to promote the lecture series, this is the first one, you know, this is just a question of, of moving it up to the top. If I want to change the image, it's just a question of removing the image and adding it or changing the text or the links. And I've done all this without going to the back end, and this thing, of course, has that same property. It can make it reusable, so I could use it on other pages as well. Um, Um, and you know, otherwise I feel like there's, um, there's a bunch of like sort of additional stuff you can do here. There's um, a lot of contrib modules that I found for best of breed for people and there's a lot of specific uh, sort of admin experience improvements throughout the product. It's in Panopoly, it's in Open Academy. Um, and that, uh, you know, it has a lot of that kind of magic. So I'll go back to this and actually, and you can try this right now. This is not something that's, um, and you can download off drupal.org or you can go to Pantheon to get it, and here are the links to do that. So it's available right now on project slash open academy, and you can go to Pantheon and download it. And um, I do hope you all will check it out. We're definitely interested in taking questions. If people want to come to the microphone, we have a, a five, five or so minutes left, um, and we're happy to stay here or go otherwise to talk. But thank you for listening. We hope you like this, and, and try it out uh, whenever you have time. Yes, first question. Earlier you mentioned um, integration with commons. Can you describe how maybe something like an events calendar would work with Open Academy? Uh, integration with commons. What I, what I, I was talking about was a completely separate site, a completely separate Drupal Commons site that we were just throwing up to um, kind of do community support around, for instance, people using Open Academy and then I'm um, wondering, oh, how do I do that cool thing that I saw in Matt's demo? Um, so, so we don't, there, there's no uh, integration built, built in. The, the stuff, though, that is really helpful for events, and I think will be, is definitely on the roadmap for functionality, is better integration with external feeds. So like that event calendar we set default content up, which helps you see it. But a lot of universities have standard event calendars they could use to actually import, um, import data from their stuff. And so maybe part of the install is say, give us, an, give us an XML or an iCal feed and we'll import your data for you. And then you could get that, you can import that same feed to Drupal uh, Commons or export it out of Drupal Commons to have, have tight integration. We've done just a little bit of legwork around that, like with the Berkeley events calendar. Um, 
in sort of breaking up the possible feeds that are there and, and at possibly at some point um, just offering, you know, you want um, all the lecture feeds or all the feeds by the graduate assembly or something like that. Right. Uh, next question. Uh, I two questions. The first is if there's any um, workflow type functionality built into Open Academy, like does it include Workbench or anything like that? Um, it doesn't include any, any uh, workflow functionality right now, but it's, it's pretty, we designed it, I think, the Drupal way, so it's pretty easy to extend, and you could add your revision or workflow uh, uh, tool of choice to it. Okay. The second question is, is more about um, how you've done this at Berkeley in terms of the sort of goofy, federated nature of most universities. I mean, it sounds like you're running this out of the communications arm of the university. Uh, is that correct? Um, yeah, the, the communications arm is the owner of the service, and, and I, I actually reside in the technical, central technology uh, arm. And then are you guys providing the service for free to every department that wants to use it? Um, the departments actually do pay a fee, and, um, and we do some specific campus uh, billing um, based on we use chart strings, so, you know, uh, we don't use credit cards. And um, basically, we are offering our users the same prices that um, anyone would get um, going to Pantheon. Okay. That's how it works for us. I think it's radically different, you know, depending on what institution you're talking to. And is it a totally an opt-in thing for your departments, or are you, do you have a mandate that's moving people towards a standard platform? No, certainly mandates do not go over well at Berkeley. <laughs> We're really famous for protests and stuff like that. So, yeah, completely opt-in. And, and we're trying to, you know, once again, like, there's Open Academy, there's also this more generic install profile. So we're, we're really trying to give people options the best we can. Thank you. Yeah, next up. Um, I guess my question is, is during the, uh, the content module where, you know, you're, you're clicking it and it's providing um, dummy content, yeah. when you disable it, does it delete all the content? Yeah, so the, the default contents run with the default content module that has sort of machine names or UIDs for each one. So you can turn it on and then turn it, if you turn it off, it'll actually all go away. But you could add additional news posts, for example, and you, when you hit disable content, it, doesn't, it will just delete the ones that are, are default. It won't delete your content. It's, it's smart like that. And one last question. On the events module, do you guys ha are you guys doing anything with um, entity registrations or anything as far as registering for events? No, um, but we do use a calendar module, and it, there is an event type, and so you could, you could attach a registration a bit to that, no problem. Yes, next. Hi, thank you. Um, uh, similar to the workflow question, I'm a little new. Can we uh, differentiate between IT staff versus communication staff versus the faculty and then the end user? And in terms of like a permissions to the? The type of editor used, for instance? Uh, oh. Allowing table access, uh, locking down to just CSS and not HTML? Oh, yeah. So the way it works now is we do have a, a secure input filter on the WYSIWYG. So we're only letting stuff through that's been approved. So uh, cross-site scripting and other kinds of, uh, of vulnerabilities wouldn't be possible. Um, it would be, though, we're using the Better Formats module and WYSIWYG um, to actually manage different profiles. So you could set up several different user roles and have people with, like, rebuild to upload images or not. And that would be totally fine and supported um, as part of sort of, you'd have to do that as an extension, but it'd be easy to do. And table editing, for instance, turn on or off, that sort of thing? Yeah, the, the, the table editing isn't in the WYSIWYG right now. We do have this, uh, the ability to add a table field entity, like in the, as part of like the add content. So that was a sort of decision not to put it in. But I think if enough people are interested in it, it'd be easy enough to implement um, in the WYSIWYG, or you, know, you could extend that by turning on that button in the WYSIWYG profile. Oh, yeah, okay. be sure to talk into the mic. Two questions. Uh, the first, do you uh, have any type of blogging capabilities um, as we, it turns, sits there? We have, a, we have a news feed, um, and that news feed could be used sort of as a blog, but it's a sort of central voice. It doesn't have individual people on it. Although, it'd be straightforward enough to add, a field, add the author name to one of the fields, and you could customize to add that to the post if you wanted. And the second question is, are there plans on interfacing this with some type of uh, learning management system or an intranet? Um, 
I think there's, there's definitely some interest in that. I think there's a, there's a learning mechanism called ELMS that's very cool out of Penn State. Um, and I think that there might be ways to sort of share information or user accounts. And then obviously Open Atrium is a great in intranet solution as well. Drupal, Drupal Commons is the same. But I think, the, I think the integration point we're trying to work most heavily for is on the, on the data level. So doing feed exchanges and like single sign-on and stuff and trying to keep the functionality here relatively basic so you can extend it as you want. Thank you. Next. something that you guys are planning on doing or thinking about? Um, I think if Berkeley charged for the apps, there would be a small trouble on campus. I th and, and there's a bit of a misconception around apps and app server, and, and yes, it is similar to what um, you know uh, the iPhone and, and the Android store uses, but um, in Drupal, if you're using an app server, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to pay for something. It, it depends on who's running the app server, and obviously, all of us are really interested in making functionality available to everyone, so we don't plan to charge for apps. Uh, next question. Yeah, thank you very much for the presentation, actually. I, I saw open public, but this is what I was waiting to see. Thank you. Hey, I have three quick questions. First is, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Right. Um, I think it's a little, you might have to speak up a little bit. Yeah, or speak really close, put your lips uh, almost on okay. it. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see. Uh, so the first one is, um, what was the module that you could customize the panel, like that below the footer button? That's the uh, panels IPE module. It ships with panels um, and the interfaces in the latest version 3.2. You can just turn it on, and then in your panel you have to make it an IPE, but then that's, that's how you would get that functionality. Uh, okay, thank you. Another one is, um, do you know a module that would allow actually customizing colors, not styles, but colors of those styles? Um, yeah, you could do integration with the color module to do some of the panel stylings and some other, maybe even for the whole theme if you wanted. We haven't gone that, that deep down in terms of, of that kind of appearance stuff, but it would be you know, certainly a possibility. So there's no module available? No, not right now. Okay. Uh, and the third one is, uh, what would you suggest to use for um, students' registration? Um, d depends on the nature of the registration workflow and how that would work. Um, but you could certainly, there's plenty of like sign up modules and other kinds of things you could attach to the event nodes or even to the, you know, specific other nodes on the site that could work for that. Um, but that's not, that's not on the roadmap specifically for this. Not yet. Um, okay. Okay. But Thank if you. enough people want it, it could totally be a thing. And you can make, it's really easy to extend the app stuff. You could just copy one of our existing apps and you could make your own registration app. Mm -hmm. I'll try it differently. Thank you. Um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll take one more question and then we'll be available sort of up here for, for other stuff. I had uh, two uh, quick questions. One uh, is related to uh, content sharing, and uh, sometimes you have people that uh, span multiple interrelated sites or news or events, uh, and uh, how you guys handle that was the first question. Um, the way, so the quite uh, dealing with sort of spam, right now the, all, there's no like sort of user-generated content. You'd have to be logged in to do that, and the accounts require administration approval. So you'd, it'd be sort of your people. Obviously, we'd be interested in extending it to have a comment module, but we'd have to evaluate the different solutions in terms of what's possible for that. But right now, you have to have an account to post content, and we assume those people are trusted. Okay, I was thinking more like uh, if you have, say, a department site, and you post some news, and you want to bubble that up to the faculty site or something, something to that effect. Oh, so you don't want it like duplicated as the? Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, I think that that's just a question of like how you're presenting it on which site and how you set up some of your like SEO rules and and what that looks like. But some people want it duplicated. They want the department news on the department site as well as on the main like news yeah, service. So site. I do want it duplicated. I just don't want to enter it twice. Oh yeah, sure. Then just uh, there's a the news feed comes with an RSS RSS feed, so you could just take that and pull it into your your main news site and have and have best of both worlds. Okay. And the second question was about uh, uh, data integration. So. Uh, all, most universities will have already the list of courses that somebody's teaching in some system already. Yep. So uh, you don't necessarily want to uh, enter that into Drupal over again. Uh, is there, have you done anything as far as pulling in uh, lists of people but, and courses? Yeah, so Brian's done some great work actually on the event stuff at Berkeley to get that sort of a good path for that. And longer term, we sort of want to support the ability to have, use the feeds module to pull in external data feeds to, to populate the content. And that would be part of the install. And especially if you're looking to do it at a university and you want like many sites on the university to have that kind of capability, you build it once, make it an app as your custom university app, and, and then you can import data. Um, and that's something that we're, that's definitely sort of high on the roadmap in terms of stuff to do. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Well, thank you everyone for coming. I know it went a little long. And, uh,
check it out and uh, come talk to Brian and I for the rest of the conference and have a great DrupalCon.